Carolina, man. How you been doing? <laughs> your favorite. You my favorite, man. You you one of my favorites. You know, you my you my top three. My top three. My top. I respect you. The top three though, man. How life been? Uh, it's actually been going pretty good. It's going on the right path finally. Get like, shit going. Now you say you were sick. Now you got corona or something you need to tell everybody? No, no, no. I ain't got the corona. I do have an upper respiratory infection, but I am recovering. So I'll I'll be back in about a couple more days. We all praying for a speedy recovery though, man. But you know, how the music thing going for you though? I ain't seen you drop music lately consistently how you should what's the you know tell me what the uh, what the issue on issue is on it. Uh, really, the issue has been with me. It's been financially. Different studios are costing, especially during this corona, people are starting to charge extra in order to come out into everything. So financially, I wasn't in a position to go to the studio. I have been working at home. I got a couple mics uh, here, so I've been trying to work on songs at home. I got a couple songs that I just haven't dropped yet, but it's going on this, that, and the third. The uh, album that I'll be dropping, hopefully, 2021. Probably not 2020. But 2021, because I got big plans for it. It's going to be different. Man, I heard your first album, bro. And then, like, bro, you were really talking your shit, man. Yeah. And I was, I was so disappointed because you weren't driving me. Like I said, man, there's just so much potential right here. Bro, I'm t it's, it's just the taste. Wait, so wait, it's coming, I'm telling you. If you like the first one, the second one is going to blow you away. Well, and I feel like, in my opinion, I feel like it was kind of hard to find. Why was it so hard to find them, man? Like, finding your album on, like, YouTube? Um, I think it's probably just because of my name. A lot of people have said that to me. It's You have to put in the KEC part of my name. You can't just say, you can't just type in the third or it won't pop up. I don't know why. But it's the third KEC, and then it pops up instantly. Okay, okay, KEC. Um, when you said the pandemic, you know, the studio been charging high, like, you know, what what have you learned from the pandemic, though? Like, what has it taught you so far? To keep my butt in the house, <laughs> honestly, because people, I mean, people are dumb. People are really stupid. Like, they don't take it seriously, and they're out here without their mask on, they go in places, and you see it, like, even the job that I was working, uh, they had people, had to shut down the place to clean it up because people are out with COVID. So you put other people's lives in danger, you feel me? So definitely to just be more careful of your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see with Atlanta, though. I mean, Atlanta out there, they are wide open out there. They, they wide open, boo. <laughs> they cool. I, I would love to be in Atlanta right now because that's really where everything is popping at. Like, South Carolina ain't really doing nothing. But Atlanta, I'm definitely going to make a trip down there soon. And they're not wearing no mask. Like they say, fuck the mask. No, I'm gonna wear my mask. I'm gonna have my our custom custom made mask at that. Uh, bands are made LRB mask. Those are also on sale. So if you want, if you need a mask, just hit me up. I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you, so you a, a mask advocate? Sound like? Yeah, definitely. I like them. Honestly, I don't mind wearing them. I don't like them. I don't, I don't care for them, man. I don't think they really do shit, though, in my humble opinion. Like, uh, no, not really. I mean, honestly, unless you wear, like, an actual medical mask, I don't really think it's necessarily doing as much as the other mask, you feel me? Like, a medical mask is going to protect you from spreading it to other people, you feel me? So if you have it and you're wearing a mask and you cough, it's not going to spread the germs, aren't going to spread it, it's going to stay right here. Versus if you're not wearing a mask and somebody else is wearing a mask and yet you sneeze or you cough and somebody's mask is shifted or it done came down, you can spread your germs that way. Yeah. It's just kind of sad though in 2020 now. So much bullshit going on in the world, but we worrying about masks right now. Like, this right. shit's crazy. Right. This, this, this shit's crazy. But how, how many unreleased songs have you recorded so far though? Like, since you've been working at the house, you got mics at the house. Um, Since the pandemic and I haven't been at the studio, I actually did go to the studio um, once since the pandemic has started, but at mm -hmm. home I recorded probably about maybe five, six songs, I think. 
Did it have features on it? Um, no, the one that I was in the studio with has the features. Um, this, that, and the third is going to have a couple of features. Hope I'm not trying. I'm, I'm going to do a couple of them, and I want to do it with a couple of different artists. Um, Ted Euler or YTG and Rocco are definitely going to be on one of them. I'm trying to get some female artists in there. I'm just trying to, you know, network and see who I can uh, connect with. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so they already finished. You just like just waiting to drop them. Sound like. Yep, that's okay. because I have the the way that I'm doing this, that, and the third. I'm not only dropping the songs as an album, but I'm also dropping videos for every song that I'm I'm, I'm dropping with the album. That's dope, man. That's real unique, though. Do you have any videos? I'm trying to search for your videos. I ain't seen any. You don't have none of I don't have any videos yet, and that's why I'm so adamant about doing it this way, because I'm going to drop them all at once, and you're going to have a bunch to look at, to listen to. You can bump them by yourself, or you can sit there in the TV and watch them at home. It's kind of crazy, because I was watching it. Using the Rocco video, I think my roots. It was some roots I was watching the other day. Yeah. And I seen I mean, you. Uh, I seen you. You know, with, with your apparel on, you had the, the LRB apparel. Yeah, I mean, about like, two or three of them, I think. Yeah, yeah, you was in that. I think you was in, uh, I can't think of the other one. Um, my Roots, then it was. Letter to you said what? It's My Roots and then Letter to Myself. Yeah, Letter to Myself. I can't think of it off the top of the head, Letter to Myself. Yeah, you was on that. I was like, man, I'm like, where's her, uh, her video at? You know, she driving all the um, I actually, uh, well, uh, the dude that I was working on uh, for this project, which is another reason why it's gotten set back so much, uh, the one I was working on to do the videos actually passed away recently. So I'm basically having to start over. Wow. Um, and I see also, man, you did a song with Rocco, Gangsta Passion, man. That was your most recent song. Uh, how did that yeah. song come together? Um... That came about, I think we were just riding around the city and he was like, I got this beat that I want you to hear. And I was, I, he played it for me. We were listening. And he was like, I want you to hop on it. And I was like, all right, bet, I got you. And it's honestly, we've been sitting on it for a minute, but it was trying to get the quality that we wanted and the sound that we wanted. So it took a couple of times recording it, but eventually we got it the way we wanted it. And we finally dropped it. Um, he decided to drop it as a single instead of dropping it on his, um, his mixtape, Elizabeth's grandson, which I was fine with, you know, it's cool. But um, I'm ho hoping he wants to do a video for it soon. Yeah, man, I should do a joint album, though. Can y'all y'all see yourself doing a joint album in the future? Um, I can see that happening, but I feel like we're at a point right now where, like, we're working on the group uh, bands are made like Real Brothers, but we're also trying to work on our, our separate artists. So, like, he's working on himself, I'm working on myself, especially because there's a little bit more distance between us right now because we haven't been able to link up um, as much. So he's definitely working on his stuff, and I'm working on mine. But in the future, I can definitely see, like, a joint album being made. Or y'all could do, like, a LRB, you know, a whole group collective, like, uh, what you call a compilation tape. You know, yeah, you definitely. I can do that one because we have some very, very talented – artist with uh bands made lrb like we just i think we just got a, um about two or three more on with us very recently so and who's the most recent members that have been added to the group um i don't know who the most recent is because i think they all kind of just came at one time um nah, dang. <laughs> i can't i don't even know who the most recent one is um Cause I, like I said, I've been ghost, like not ghost, but MIA because they're further away. I'm still here trying to get stuff together. So we have, we're going to meet up probably sometime soon and just be, cause I haven't been, I haven't even been introduced to everybody yet. Like some of them are, are mysteries to me. I think I met um, one or two at the last studio session that we all did together. And then I had to leave early cause I had things to do this far as my child goes, so I had to leave early, but um, we're probably going to meet up soon, and I, I, can, I can get those names, but until then, I'll, uh, I'll have the names for you. Hey, man, I've been looking for you, Terry. I've been trying. I've been calling around. Man, we all going to get together, man, but you know how he is. I don't know, <laughs> Jay Reed. I don't know. You know, I'm just going to play. I don't know, Jay Reed. I don't know. 
no, 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 no. So he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. He said he talked to y'all. He said he talked to you. So I said I left it at that. But um, yeah, I'm a big fan. I, I like the song Gangsta Passion though, man. I thought it was a real different song, especially for Rocco. I feel like he really got out of his box. We talked about that off camera. Yeah. You know, like, um, I, I really like that uh that record though, man. That was another so, reason why it took so long for us to get it together because it was something that it honestly brought me out of my comfort zone as well because I'm singing and rapping on the track and it, it's more slower for him. It was it was a little different, so it was trying to find the right the right rhythm for him in order to get on that song so that was part of another reason why it took us a little longer to drop it because i think we both changed our lyrics at least twice before we put we put it down oh, okay so y'all real hands-on on that project i see y'all was real okay yeah. who made the beat for y'all because the beat dope man i fuck with it um uh, that particular beat i think was a youtube beat oh okay I think I'm not honestly sure. That was interesting. That was interesting though, man. Um, a lot of people forget about that. You two got the beats on there for sale too. Oh yeah. Um, most of the songs that I put out on my EP were songs that I bought off of YouTube. Um, some of them were personalized for me specifically, but um, I think it was nine out of ten, and same old shit is the ones that are personalized for me particularly. Oh, okay, okay. And who who's the beat? Who personalized the beats for you? Um, at that time, I think it was the murder or Moses Laura. Them them were customized for me, and I have I've had them for a while. Like I've had them for a while. I've been sitting on sitting on them for a while, and I just that was part of before I even started making music. I had these beats sitting, and I just never never used them. And then you know you get to dig it in your email and you find things like oh I found these and I got a couple more producers uh, that send me uh, beats now I have to check I, I'm usually not want to check my email but now I'm having to check them a lot because you'll have like random producers sending me beats like hey check this out see if you like this like I think it's, uh, we got Cedric um, but I think he goes by Daddy Does It um, as his producer name you got T the producer and then you got uh, the Demon Jamaru he sends me beats as well that's dope, man. I'm gonna send you some. <laughs> Feel free. I'm gonna send you some. Yeah, though, man. Um, I, I and the one thing about the album, I like talk my shit. Like, I feel like you had a story to tell. You had a message. Like, what was it like creating that album? Like, you know, making it. What was the process like? Um, okay, what your mindset was? Every pretty much every song on that album was directed towards somebody in particular, or maybe multiple people. It's um every song was based on like a personal experience I that I've had, like um, looking at me was definitely directed towards an individual. I'm not gonna start getting drama, but yeah, it was directed towards an individual. Um, nine out of ten was directed towards a couple of people, um, because in the song, you know, you I state their initials. I never state their actual names, but I have their initials in the song. So if they hear it, they know who they are. Um, so you, uh -huh. I'm sorry, I think it was in my mentions, but I'm not saying as well. It's just initials. I, I'm not going, I don't know. I feel like if these songs do blow up, I don't want them going looking for these people. You feel me? Like, leave that in the past. I'm not going to drag the past back into it, but I will use the music as an avenue for me to release the things that I was going through. So that's a lot of what Talk My Shit was. And I think I was like in an angry period of my life at that point. And I was like, I'm just. I'm gonna take it out of the music, so I'm gonna write these songs, and the, and all of them they just came to me like in a matter of that same day, and I could have recorded them that same day because they were all based on an, an actual event or a personal experience I was going through. And how old you was when you recorded this one? Um, twenty 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 one. Okay, because you said in the song mentions you're twenty one with the old soul at the crib yeah. with no club. Like, explain that to me. Um, 21 years old with an old soul catch me at the crib at the club nigga what the fuck um, I'm not the one that really go out like that like when I say I'm 21 with an old soul I mean that for real like I don't I don't listen to a lot of trap music I don't listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of R&B I'm more of an R&B type of person I do rap but 
honestly, my music of choice is R and B. So if you come in my house, you probably gonna listen. You gonna hear some some old school, new school R and B playing in the background. Um, and also, I don't really go out like that. Like I'm more of a homebody. I will go out. I like to go out with people. I like to enjoy time with my friends and everything. But she'll catch me at the house most of the time. And I really don't go to clubs unless it's like an open mic or something. So you only go out there. They paying the nigga. <laughs> exactly. All about the money. You get that bag. I feel you. I feel you. What, what, what made you like that? Was that from your upbringing or that's just how you is? Honestly, that's just really how I am. I can say it was partially my upbringing because, like, back in high school, I didn't really go to the hype, the sports games or nothing like that. Like, I went to prom now. I was a little bad bitch at prom, you know, all four years. But besides, like, football games, homecoming, stuff like that, I didn't go to partly because the people that went, I didn't really want to go with, and then partly because my parents are pretty overprotective when it came to that in high school, so they didn't allow me to go anywhere. I even had, uh, what's it called, basketball conditioning. I was conditioning with the basketball, the varsity basketball team at one point, and we finished practice, and I came upstairs, and I took my phone out the locker room, and I looked at my phone, and my phone had been blown up by my dad, my mom, my uncles, my grandma, all of them calling me, like, where are you? If you, you know, need help, let me know what's going on. And then I got a call from a 911 operator talking about Keithy. Is this Keithy? And I'm like, yeah, who is this? And they're like, uh, this is uh, this is 911 operator. Your mom's looking for you. I said, why is she looking for me? She knows I had practice. So, you know, I had to call her, like, uh, where are you? She said, where are you? I came to the school. You're not there. I'm like, yes, I am. I've been downstairs the whole time. And had to get, if, long story short, I had to go get the coach, bring him upstairs, let him tell her that I've been at, at, at practice the entire time since school let up. And she was like, oh, well, I remember now, but at the time I didn't. So that was another thing that just set me off of doing anything or going anywhere. Oh, you had one of those parents. Uh, I had kind of something like that, too. I was a guy. You had one of those parents where you, you had a guy over. And they ask you a bunch of questions. They ask the guy a bunch of questions and shit. Like, where you from and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, that's a very overprotective parents. Did you call them helicopter moms and dads? Is that what they call them? Is that, I honestly never heard that. Helicopter that's sister, parents. That's my sister comment. She said, mostly our dad. Honestly, y'all didn't have that many issues out of my dad. She may have them because she stays with him. But most of my issues were with my mama. I'm not going to lie. She didn't like for me to do anything. Well, you grew up in the Ville, though, right? Yeah. That's a wild city, though, man. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if I feel like it could be worse. And I'm honestly, me, I didn't I didn't have a, 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 a want to go and do a bunch of bad things. Like, I didn't even start smoking until, like, my last year of high school. And even then, I stopped for a while. And then when I moved out is when I started back again. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Kind of started, yeah, I started like 11th grade, 12th grade, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, see? Yeah, I, I caught that, I caught that bad habit. Um, what, what was the rest of your childhood like growing up? Um, well, I grew up in a household where both my parents were very active in my life. Um, I mostly stayed with one or the other. Um, I mostly stayed with my mom through middle school. And I would go to my dad's house on the weekends or he'd come to the house and, you know, spend time with us or whatever, help us with homework. Um, and then when I hit high school, I think I moved in with my dad and my grandma and stayed with them throughout high school. And after that, I moved back in with my mom and then I moved out. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So you pretty much didn't really have a lot of freedom. Like, you just, you know, go to school, um, school and home. Um, no, not really. Um, as a kid, like, I would have my neighbors, which would be Rocco, of course. Like, Rocco was my neighbor. That's how we met each other. Um, but I was staying with my mom in Piedmont. Um, we met over there. And we used to play outside all the time. I'll tell you, if I couldn't come outside, they come to my window, and we play the, the Wii or the PlayStation or whatever we had, <coughs> excuse me, through the window. So, like, we just had him the controller, and he'd be playing through the window, and his, him and his brothers, and we, me and my brother would be sitting there in, our, in my room playing the game. Or we'd um, go up the hill, play in the, in the field, we'd run around in the streets, go to a little park up the hill. And um, well, besides that, we didn't really go anywhere. Like, I couldn't even really go to 
uh, what's it called, uh, sleepovers, because if my mom didn't know him, I wasn't going nowhere. Like, she was like, I need to meet their parents, I need to meet them, I need to ask them a bunch of questions, what's the address, where they live, like, all, all that. And so I didn't, I, a lot of times, I didn't feel like going through all that, so I didn't even ask. You didn't want to go through all that protocol. Right. <laughs> that's how, that's how black parents be though, no, no lie. Yeah, man, that's a that's a ten step procedure. So, <laughs> yeah, but usually when um when children go through that, when they get older, they kind of just act buck wild. But now they got that leash off them, that dog leash off. Them. So you you don't feel like it affected you like that? Um, no, honestly, because I've been about my money. Like I've I've really been about it since my first job. Like my first job. I, I'm not gonna lie, I flexed a little bit when I got to school. I started buying the pizzas and stuff with my friends and sat at the table. But besides that, I just worked on my car that I had. I bought, I got my grandma gave me a car and I worked on that. I paid my insurance and everything. And from then on, even when I moved out, it was more just to keep the peace in the household over anything. And then once I moved out, I, I still didn't go nowhere. Like I had certain, sometimes my friends would ask me to come hang out and that's what I would do. But besides that, I was in the house and at work. Working on my car, made stacking up my money. Um, I got set back when I got pregnant, you know. But um, besides that, I was in the house, and even then, I was always in the house. So, who your first car was? Ooh, I had a um, two thousand Nissan Sentra. Oh, that's it. You had a better first car than me, though. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> it feels good though. At least, you, at least you didn't have to buy your first car though. I mean. Yeah, it was um, passed down. My dad bought it, and then he gave it to my grandma, and then my grandma gave it to me, and I wrecked it. <laughs> Damn, so you, that was passed down for generation, huh? Yeah, it was. I used to call it, it was a green car. I used to call it a uh, green bean. Green bean. Uh, yeah. How long did it last you, though, before it went down on you? Um, It lasted through, I believe, my junior year, halfway or if not almost through my junior year. Um, then I was, at the time, I was doing a lot of stuff at church. I had praise dance practice. <laughs> and so I was picking up my sister from my mom's house, and I was on my way back to Piedmont. And I wasn't looking where I was going. My sister was sitting in the back seat. She kept talking and talking to me. And I turned around and, like, fussed at her, and I turned back, and there was a car stopped in front of me, and I smacked into the back of them. Didn't do anything to their car, but maybe, like, shift the muffler, but it completely tore up the front of my car. Yeah, 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 and that's how that's how Green Bean went down. That's how Green Bean went to her final resting place. Yeah. Junk yard heaven. No, actually, she's sitting in my grandma's yard. Um, she really wants to get it fixed, and that car has been sitting for a good couple of years now. So honestly, I feel like she should just jump the car. She doesn't want to do it. It's up to her. You ain't gonna keep it when you blow up, man. You know, for like humble beginnings. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to forget where I came from, especially because the land that my grandmother has has been passed down from generations, and I plan on continuing that, um, hopefully as the time goes on, so if she, uh, she's leaving it, I'm pretty sure she's going to leave it to my dad, my dad will leave it to me, hopefully I can leave it to my daughter, if not, you know, the rest of my siblings and family, you know, and just what, hopefully, I really, me personally, I want to build up that whole area, just build up our houses, that way, my family is all in this like one space. Um, I I don't know about me being there all the time necessarily because like my space. I love my family, but I like my space. But I definitely that's something that I I can see myself doing, um, just in that land because that's family and like all up the street that we live on is family. So did you grow up singing in church? Did I grow up singing in the church? Yeah, you grew up yeah. singing. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, I led most of the songs in the youth choir, honestly. Oh, wow. So you the, you the lead singer in the choir? Most of the time, yeah. Um, oh, man. Oh, man. You didn't tell me you could <laughs> sing, man. You was hiding stuff from me, huh? Um, I kind of lost my touch over the years, I feel like. Because um, back then, I don't know, like back then I used to sing all the time, and then I stopped singing a lot. Um, but I got, like, I think of, like, middle school is kind of what pushed me away from it, because uh, I had tried out for the choir at in middle school and I got rejected for the advanced choir. Like I got the regular choir but the advanced choir I got um rejected for it. 
And I felt like I could sing better than the mother girls, but the teacher didn't think so, or didn't feel like I was ready for that. And that kind of just, it, that's another reason why it took me so long to get back into music, because it, it, it set me back. It put a dent in my self-esteem. So, yeah, I can tell you, I, I'm, I'm not the best singer at, at, by any means, but I can hold a note every now and then. Think about doing that in your rhymes a little bit more, like making it more melodic and then rapping with it. Make yeah, sure we... definitely. Um, some of them I'm I am with. Okay, so the, the concept with this, that, and the third, um, is three different concepts of how I make the song. So like, it's this, that, and the third. So it stands for it's really for K E C. K E C and my name stands for the different personas that go with the third. So you have Kiwi, Elik, and Simone, and they all three will have a different style. So like E Week is more the hard trap rapping, the angry songs. Simone is more of the melodic songs, maybe even just straight singing, depending on how I feel that day. But more like lovey dovey type. And then Kiwi comes with the more relatable, more life type of songs, but it's a balance between the melodic and the rapping with her. So um with this, with this at the third, I'll definitely be dropping those on like those three different types on the album. So you just got a whole lot of personality sound like. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so which one you is right now, man? Um, that's a good question. Depends. Most of the time, most of the time, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm Keely all the way. Simone usually you will see her with wigs. You will see her in the more feminine outfits, um, which there's post on my page where you can see where I switch it back and forth. Um, so that's Simone. And e -Leak is the more darker, uh, straight, just niggadom, honestly. Uh, that's e -Leak. So right now I feel like I'm probably just Keely because I, I'm just, it's just, like, I could be full blown, look like a nigga right now if I wanted to be, but I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm at home. And I got a cold, so <laughs> maybe you you're too cold for the cold. Ooh, Ooh. Cold, for the cold. So who's the third then? The third is the combination of all of them. That's just, I guess you could say it's based off of like the what's it called the diagnosis uh, DID. I'm not saying that I have it because I don't. I'm, I'm really just me. But that's the concept behind it. So, like, with DID, you have the host, which is the actual person. And for this concept, we'll call the host the third. And inside of the host, you find Keely, Elik, and Simone. So, Keely, Elik, and Simone make up the third. And the third is the host. That's just the body that everyone is inside of. So, that's who the third is. The third is the mixture between Keely, Elik, and Simone. So, when you see me... If I look like more one, that's just basically who's present that day. So if you see Simone, I'm really feminine. I have I might have a wig on. I'm gonna have the the hoops. The well, I always wear my rings though. The rings are like my identifying thing. I wear three rings on my right hand and two rings on my left. And eventually, if I ever get married, I'll be three and three. But until then, it'll be three and two. But I don't know. I guess that's just the symbolizing of three. Kiwi, Ewe, and Simone. I like how you put that together. That was very, very descriptive. Do you practice that in the mirror or something? Like, do you go over that? Did no, you go over that, like? that was off the brain. I'm not off the brain. Yeah, that's no, I mean, that's, just a, that's really how I see it. Like, that's always been, like, it, I just had to figure out how to put it into words. It's hard to put it into words sometimes. Um, because they're like, what does K K E C stand for? I'm like, Kiwi Elite Like, well, what is that? What is, what are the, who are those people? Are they like people that rap with you? I'm like, no, that's me. So I had to figure out a way to explain that to people. And that's just like the best way. Um, Cause I used to teach, uh, substitute teach and after school teacher. So I'm pretty good with describing things in a different way to help people understand. Really, you was a substitute teacher? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. I mean, you're kind of young though. So how, how, how did you get that gig? I want you to explain that for him. <laughs> Um, I, worked how did you, how did... I worked for a charter mm -hmm. school, so um, it was still a public school, but I worked for, um, it actually got shut down because of funding, I believe, but um, my mom also worked at the school, and I knew 
some of the teachers that work there and they um I started off with the after school because they needed help like I would volunteer up there because my mom worked up there and then I ended up getting hired on for the after school and then I got um, hired on for substituting because I think the PE teacher that was there ended up being out for a while and I took on uh, as a long-term sub for a little while and then after that, they had me subbing in different classrooms for different teachers, teachers walking up to me and that personally asking me, like, hey, can you sub for my class this week and these days? And I was like, yeah, I can do that. And it's just, I loved kids, don't get me wrong. Like, the kids were awesome. I loved going there every day. But it, it definitely had its challenges. So I'm not exactly mad that the school closed down, but. <laughs> I mean, kids can be brutally honest, though. Like. Oh, yeah. No. So, like, what encounters did you have with a kid? Like, bad experiences that you have with children there? Okay. Um, one of the things that I definitely had to deal with almost on a daily basis is um, ask them asking me if I'm a female or a man. Um, that was definitely one I have had to deal with a lot. Because um, most of the time, I just wore jeans and a t-shirt. Like, I'm not wearing anything. Is that offensive? Um, huh? Is that offensive though? Cause is, is that no, offensive? Somebody don't know you, man. They're kids. I didn't. I didn't take offense to it because I know that I sound like a female. I know I don't sound like a man. So if you met me in person and I just started speaking to you, you're gonna automatically know that I'm a female. But kids, they don't necessarily put two and two together. So if they just look at the way that I dress, they're like, "Are you a man or a woman?" Another question they used to ask me because I was pregnant while I was working here, which is another thing. I'm like, why do you think I'm a man and I have this big old belly? But okay. Um, but another thing that they would ask me is if I was having a boy or a girl. And I would tell them that I would tell the same child that day. And then the next day they're like, Miss Sullivan, are you having a boy or a girl? Like I just told you this yesterday, having a little girl. Oh, okay. Next day, Miss Sullivan, are you, are you having a boy or a girl? I've told you this for two days in a row. I'm having a little girl. Then I'll get into their class. I'll be subbing their class. I'm like, Miss Sullivan, Miss Sullivan, what's your name? What's to ask you a question? I say, what's, what's up? He's like, you having a boy or a girl? I'm like, when did you, you ask him? He's like, I don't know. And it was like, I dealt with that in almost every every classroom, I think. They would always ask me that every day. But besides that, they weren't, there wasn't, they, there wasn't much they said to me, honestly. Um, other teachers dealt with a lot of things and a lot of questions and a lot of brutally honest kids. But me personally, they, they just, I don't know, I guess they thought I was cool, <laughs> so to speak. They were just like, if they got in trouble, they're like, can we go to Miss Sullivan's room? Or if they wanted to get out of class and I saw them in the hallway, I was like, okay, you can come to my classroom, talk, come talk to me, and they would talk to me. Um, or they're like, if, if they knew their teacher was to be out, they would ask for me personally to come to their classroom. But I didn't really have that many issues, except for the ones that had um, different problems and different behavioral issues. Um, I had a couple of situations with that, but I've never gotten, like, hit by a child or anything. I've had to break up two kids fighting before, but besides that, I don't even really have that many issues. Well, this was an elementary school. You worked there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're going to be very, very honest. Yeah. That's what – it's two it's, – it's certain type of people don't lie. Drunk people and kids. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I believe, me personally, I believe alcohol brings out honesty in people. So, things that they won't say sober, they'll definitely say drunk. Absolutely, because a drunk soul speaks a sober mind. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people make excuses on alcohol. No, you wasn't that drunk and high. You would think about <laughs> it the whole time, but you didn't have the confidence to do it. So, you had to get inebriated to do it. So, you right. can think about it. But the alcohol just gave you a little bit more self-esteem. It just made you feel bolder. That's what right. it, does. it enhances you. So like, now you... I have the confidence. Let's, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people make excuses. Oh, I got in the bed with that person because I was drunk. No, you did it. You were right. cheating. They blamed it on the alcohol. <laughs> okay. That's <Jim>. lies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dope song, though, by the way, man. It is, it is, it is. I'm going to have my throwback days. That's definitely one of the songs that I play. Really? Yeah. Uh, and, and, like, in the song, Look At Me, I want you to explain that song to me, because that's one of my favorite songs off the tape. Hmm. 
Um, how can I put this? Looking at me, okay, so at the time, I was dealing with, um, a, hello, hey guys, what's up? Um, at the time, I was dealing with somebody, this, this guy, um, and he kept going in between me and another person, and I kept cutting him off, and he kept going back. And then she would come to me like, leave my nigga alone. Like, this is my man, da 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 And I'm like, bruh, like, your man can't leave me alone. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. I, and that's basically where the song came out because um, I think I had an incident with her where she, I had seen her in public, and I think she gave me this weird look, and I was like, I'm about to go home and write about this. And, yeah, I don't know if she's ever heard it, but I definitely wrote it about her. You said some very uh, the word I'm looking for descriptive things. So all those things you said was true. Oh yeah, definitely. And you was throwing shots at the girl. Yes. And the dude, if you really paid attention towards the end as well. What was the name of this guy? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna post. I'm not gonna say the name because um, <laughs> some of the people that are watching probably know who I'm talking about. Um, cause they know me personally. We will talk your shit on that song. I ain't gonna lie. I see we got the title for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially because I don't know. I, it took a while to build the confidence that I have, and especially with that, um, it was another way to reassure myself. Cause I'm like, why am I dealing with all this? But I'm like, okay, it's because I'm me. I know who I am. You feel me? So. So was you like the side piece in that situation or you was like the main piece or you was the middle? Like what position was you playing? Was you like you were playing all positions at, at one point. Basically. I never, but I never, I never dated them officially. Um, but. Um, oh, you said them. I want you to explain it. You said them. So it was you. Them. Them. I'm sorry. Let me, let me, let me clarify because uh, let me, let me clarify. I was, I've never dated him. Oh. But he couldn't, I, I was dealing with him for a while, for years, and the girl that he was with ended up having his child, and he still couldn't leave me alone. I'm not proud of this moment, don't get me wrong, like, I'm not proud of the things that I was doing. It's a no judgment free zone, so you can feel how you want to feel over here. Yeah, basically. And it's just like, I don't know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm different now just because I don't think that... It was just a time because I was mad. I made, honestly made the song because I was mad because how she was acting towards me, how she was looking at me. And I'm like, baby girl, if I wanted him, I could have him. I don't want him. I just have fun with him. That's basically it. And when you're with him, I don't even bother. I don't mess with him. But when y'all break up and you, he comes back to me, I mean, it was what it was. But now it's, a, it's, now it's different because I don't like, I don't feel like I need to be putting people down, females down like that. Um, I may make a song, but it's it's music. You feel me? It's relatable music. But in reality, I'm not 